such as valves and things like that. I'll review both these uh, both these losses, how to compute them. Uh, before I do that, I'd like to emphasize one thing. I always found this this type of approach very, very convenient, particularly in solving pipe problems. The head loss of due to friction can be represented by this equation, kq to the power of x. k is a coefficient. I'll show you how to calculate in the next few slides. But it's a function of q, the flow rate. And x is an exponent, depending on which method you use to compute the friction loss. X, uh, I'm going to discuss two methods here. One is the typical one that you're probably already familiar with, called the Darcy's Weisbach equation. For that, x is 2. And then, of course, the one that's most widely used in water systems is called Hausen williams For that, x is 1.85. So in either case, uh, all all units must be consistent. For example, head loss due to friction will be in feet, Q in CFS. Now, K, I'll show you how to calculate That's like a, I don't want to call it a friction coefficient because it's not. It's, I'll just call it a head loss coefficient. And in this case, on the next two slides are the equations for K. It's very important that we understand this or, or take it with you. Um, it's important you calculate it accurately. The first one is for Darcy's Weisbach equation. I will not uh, emphasize that equation too much here, but nonetheless, you should know when you go to solve some problems how to use this equation. Uh, this is head loss is equal to kq to the power of x again, where x is 2.0, and here's the k value. f, as you all know, is the friction factor in the pipe of the pipe, typically obtained from Stanton Moody's diagram. It's a function of Reynolds number and the relative roughness of the pipe. And I'll show you that diagram in a minute. But that's how you obtain the friction factor F. Unfortunately, that friction factor F depends upon not only the relative roughness of the pipe, it also depends on the Reynolds number, which in turn depends on the velocity in the pipe. So for many, many problems, uh, when you try to solve them, you, have to, you really do not have the true friction factor till you do a trial and error method. That's why I like to avoid it uh, generally. If it's unless they force you to use it, I suggest use Haas and Williams, where I'll show you we can assume their cost of uh, friction to be constant. Uh, here's the K for SI units. On the next slide is the Haas and Williams, and I'll use that and I'll show you that in a minute. But here's the Moody and Stanton Moody's diagram that we talked about. It's a friction factor F, Reynolds number, and of course the relative roughness. If you're using the Darcy's Weisbach method, you've got to get familiar with this diagram. Uh, most applications, uh, you probably have to estimate the Reynolds number. And of course, the relative roughness depends on the pipe, type of pipe you're using. Those two combined will give you a friction factor. Uh, for example, if the Reynolds number is 10 to the power 6, which is pretty turbulent flow region, and say the relative roughness is 0 0.002, you go across and read your friction factor on this axis. By the way, the relative roughness, uh, epsilon over d is dimensionless, so it should be unitless also. So if epsilon is in inches, make sure the diameter is in inches. If epsilon is in feet, diameter must be in feet also. That's called the, uh, I, I leave this to you for review. Uh, I want to spend more time with the second method, which I believe uh, if they don't uh, specify, is the easier one to use, uh, primarily because this Hausen roughness coefficient can be fixed or held constant with minor adjustments uh, for the pipe flow velocity. Okay. Now, Hausen Williams is the same type of equation in the same form, where k is equal to 4.73 L divided by c to the power 1.85 d to the power 4.865. Make sure you calculate this very, very carefully for each problem, because I do not have a physical interpretation of k. Therefore, we do not know if we got it right or wrong. L is the length of the pipe in feet. C is the Hausen's roughness coefficient. I'll show you a table. You can get it from there. And d is the pipe diameter in feet, not in inches, but in feet. The exponent, don't forget, is 1.85. In SI units, it's the same equation, except it's 10.7 L. L is in meters, not in kilometers. Uh, C is, of course, the same roughness coefficient as before, and D is the pipe diameter. Now let me show you a table. Uh, first, before I show you a table for C, so 
some notes on the Hawes and Williams coefficient c. First of all, you have to make a, 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 a note next table. I'll give you the typical values. But the most important thing is the higher the c value, the smoother the pipe, unlike the friction factor f, the Darcy's. Remember, in Darcy's, the smaller the f, uh, the larger the, uh, more, more the friction. The higher the f value, the more the friction. Uh, so rougher the pipe, but in the case of Hausen C is just the opposite. A smooth pipe has a C value of 150, for example, a PVC pipe. An old pipe has a C value of about 60 or lower. So these are some things to know. Also, m generally the method is valid for velocities in the range of 6 to 9 feet per second. Most water supply or pipe problems fall into this range. If not, they also recommend a small adjustment in the C value. A plus 5% uh, increase in C is recommended if the velocity is obviously are below 6 feet per second. Okay? So between 3 to 6 feet per second, for example, you decrease, increase the C by 5%. Why? Well, the smaller the velocity, the less the head loss due to friction. And that means you want to increase the C value to make it smoother. And the other, on the other hand, if, it's, uh, if the velocity is outside 9 feet per second, say 9 to 12, in that case, you basically decrease the C value in order to reflect that you'll have more head loss due to friction. Okay, so that sli small adjustment is needed in applying this method. But unlike, uh, unlike the Darcy's Weisbach equation, which is you don't have the trial and error to deal with in this situation. Here's the typical C values in this table. Uh, again, a cast iron pipe, for example, right here, it's got a C of 130. A steel pipe has a C of 120. So you can consult this table from the description of the problem, select your C value. Minor losses. These are due to fittings in pipes normally, and uh, most of those fittings, uh, the head loss can be associated with those fittings, can be expressed in this form. Uh, Km v squared over 2g, where v squared over 2g is the velocity head. Km is basically the minor loss coefficient. Now I can rearrange this also into the same form as we did for the fr friction loss, and that is in terms of Q, the discharge. Recognizing the fact that Q over A is velocity, and therefore manipulate that equation and finally into this form, where K prime is now a function not only of Km, but also the cross-sectional area of the pipe, which is OK because most of the time that is true. The, it depends on the fitting, which pipe it's in. The size of that pipe is important also in the head loss situation. Here's the typical KM values. These are the minor loss coefficients. For example, a fully open globe valve is 10, uh, an angle valve 5. Uh, you'll also have to sometimes deal with what we call entrance losses and exit losses. Those KM values are given at the bottom of the table. Okay. I've set up a small example for you to calculate the particularly these K values. And then, of course, finally, in step number three, to calculate the head loss in this particular pipe situation. You've got a 12-inch pipe, 1,500 foot long. Hausen C is 120. The flow rate is given as 5 CFS. So the first thing you will do in many, many problems is to calculate that loss coefficient that I told you k. In this case, it's 4.73 L over c to the power 1.85 d to the power 4.865. I suggest if you have, I think we might have a few minutes to just go ahead and calculate this. I just want to make sure you get the right answer. Uh, so go ahead and try this, see what you come up with for this particular problem. Remember, there's no other way to verify this because it all depends upon these variables here, L, C, and D. So go ahead and substitute these in consistent units and see what you come up with. Give you a few minutes because then once you know the K, you can calculate the head loss, which is number three here. But let's do the K to make sure you know how to do it. Do I have any volunteers?
all you have to do is substitute L, the length of the pipe, which is given. Because C to the power, that exponent 1.85 can be a little tricky. Uh, 120 raised to the power 1.85. And the pipe diameter is, is given here, but make sure it's in feet. That's the only thing you have to do, make sure of. Any answers? No. Uh, I hope you all can hear me. I don't know. Maybe you all are a little bit tired of doing computations. I, just, I don't know what's... what's uh, I hope you all can all hear me clearly. So anyway, um, we'll move on because I've got some other stuff to show you here. So that's how you can... In this case, the K will come out to be 1.0. Okay, you can go home and work it out. Uh, typical problems. These are what you might see on the exam is we call the I call them type 1, type 2, and type 3 problems, but most of the time I would say type 2, where the head loss is given and you're asked to calculate the flow rate in the pipe system. Here are all the variables generally involved. We have seen them all up to this point. So let's move ahead and uh, look at some typical problems. Uh, for example, we can end up with pipes what are called in series, in parallel, and branch systems. I'll review only three of them here. Uh, the loop systems you can review on your own it's in the appendix. I think we'll talk about these because these are typical simple problems that you might see in the morning exam. Here, for example, I have the equation of continuity and I'm going to show you how to use the head loss equation, law of conservation of energy. Most of the problems involve the use of these two equations. In this particular problem that I've set up for you, We'll have three pipes in series initially, pipe one, pipe two, and pipe three. The water comes out of a reservoir, and you'll be asked to calculate something, uh, for example, the flow rate in the system. That's what I call type two problem. But keep in mind, in order to calculate that flow rate, you have to know the head loss, total head loss. That typically is obtained from the Bernoulli equation, the energy equation. So you'll have to use both these equations in order to solve the problem. So let me illustrate that. Uh, before I do that, I want to emphasize, uh, show you a few things. First of all, for pipes in series, which you'll see the, in my example, typically the head loss is the sum of all the head loss in each pipe, but the flow rate is, remains the same or constant in each pipe. So QE is equal to Q1 is equal to Q2 is equal to Q3. It's constant. So what that does is tells uh, basically gives you a third equation for the k values. Remember, we talked about that loss coefficient. For pipes in series, you basically add up to add up all the k values in order to get the equivalent ke. For pipes in parallel, the head loss is no lo is constant across the parallel pipes, but the q's get a split up, and that leads to this equation, number 22. So if you want to take two parallel pipes and combine them, the equivalent pipe, 1 over Ke, is computed using the reciprocals as shown here, equation 22. I'll illustrate both these two in my example, how to calculate the equivalent Ke for these pipe systems. So in this case, what I've done is I've sure taken the liberty of setting up a problem for you. In the first case, number one, the hydraulic, the head drop from the reservoir point A to point E here, that's a free open surface. It's basically a free surface or atmospheric pressure there. At that point, the total drop is 200 feet. And the system is composed of pipes 1 and 2 and 3. And for the same system, find the discharge when the parallel pipe 4 is added on. So I'm going to calculate the discharge in this pipe that's coming out of the reservoir into this pipe for these two scenarios, or two cases. So let's look at case number one. Before I do all the case one, case one, I have to calculate all the K values. That's step number one. So in this case, for each pipe, I calculate K1, K2, K3. This is the loss coefficient, which is required in order to calculate the flow rate Q using the Haas and Williams equation. So here are the K values. Make sure you go through these very carefully. For instance, K1 is 4.5.